You all must be aware of this interview given by former German Chancellor Angela Merkel to a German National Weekly newspaper on 7th December 2022. I have searched the entire internet. I couldn't find that video. For obvious reasons, it has been taken down. I found one link, but this video is taking forever to load and it's not playing. Anyhow, here are some screenshots of Western news media articles. From these headlines, you can assume what that interview must have been about. Although these articles do not speak the whole truth, these articles have been carefully crafted with the right choice of words. Nevertheless, in this video, I will tell you the whole story. Here is one article. It says, former German Chancellor criticized her own government's defense policy. Here is another one. It says, Cold War never ended. In this article, she also made it very clear that Germany's alternative energy policy is too expensive and Russian gas is the only feasible option for Germany. There is another interesting article from Ukraine's Media House. It says, The Minsk Agreements and Merkel's Political Amnesia. I hope you know the meaning of the word amnesia. It means a partial or total loss of memory. Basically, this Ukraine's media is not happy with the ex-German Chancellor statement, what she said on December 7th. Here the main words that need to be pointed out is the Minsk Agreement. Let me also show you the extended part of this article. As you can see, this article was written on 11th December. That is after Angela Merkel's interview. I have highlighted the main sentences. Pause the video and read. What actually became a controversy after that interview is that Angela Merkel said something about the Minsk Agreement of 2014. She said, and I quote, The Minsk Agreement of 2014 was actually meant to give Ukraine precious time to become stronger. Now the question is to become stronger for what? to prepare Ukraine for a war with Russia. Now this automatically reveals the intention of the West. The Russia-Ukraine war was already pre-planned by United States and European countries. Angela Merkel has been in power for over 16 years. Therefore, she knows what she is speaking. And I personally feel she spoke the truth. Now let's begin this video and let me explain the entire background story. So sit tight and let your brain absorb some truth. Let me first tell you about the Minsk Agreement of 2014. On 21st November 2013, Euro Maiden protests happened. Many even considered this as a revolution or a defining moment in the history of modern Ukraine. Why did this protest happen? Because the then President Viktor Yanukovych and his government promised the Ukrainian public that they would sign the European Union Association Agreement. Now there are two things associated with European Union Association Agreement. One. If Ukraine joins the European Union Association Agreement, then it is an opportunity for Ukraine as a country to develop economically. And two, for majority Ukrainian public, this is a civilizational choice. They wanted to get away from the old Soviet Russian culture and move towards something more modern like the European culture. I'm not saying everyone in Ukraine wanted that, but vast majority of the Ukrainian public has this notion. Now, on 21st November 2013, Yanukovych and his government went back on the promise and suspended the signing of European Union Association Agreement. And why did he go back on his promise? Obviously, he had the Russian pressure because Russia doesn't want Ukraine to be part of European Union. It wants Ukraine to be a neutral country or remain within the orbit of Russia and the Russian culture. Because there is hardly any difference between Ukrainians and Russians, except very minute small differences. So Viktor Yanukovych on one hand had the Russian pressure. But then on the other hand, even European Union was not in favour of giving Ukraine a full access to the European Union membership. And let me also tell you this, Viktor Yanukovych was a pro-Russian politician. During his early days, he was also part of the Communist Party of Soviet Union. Now that I've said this, many of you might even think he was Vladimir Putin's puppet. And that is the reason he did not sign the European Union agreement. You have the right to think so. But the next president who came after him, that is Petro Poroshenko, he was a pro-Western, pro-NATO, pro-European politician. So what you need to understand is that, just because a country has a flag or a constitution, it doesn't mean that it is an independent country in all practicality. Ukraine geographically is located in between two strong world powerhouses, that is Russia and the West. It can either be in the Russian orbit or in the Western orbit. It cannot be an independent country. But then yes, what Ukraine should have done is, it should have tried to be a neutral country, neither support Russia or US. Or what Ukraine should have done is, it should have had limited relation with both Russia and US. But then Ukraine couldn't do that. 
Anyhow, so if you see, Viktor Yanukovych had a very narrow options. So his government chose not to sign the European Union Association Agreement. And that is what created a civil unrest in Ukraine, which later turned into riots, then civil disobedience, and then into a movement. And this was called the Euromaidan movement. And the purpose of this movement was to remove President Viktor Yanukovych. There was a massive protest in the capital city of Kyiv. So you can imagine how much the public of Ukraine wanted to sign the deal and join the European Union. And by the way, it is no more a hidden secret. The 2014 Ukraine coup was sponsored by United States. US Ambassador Victoria Nuland's phone was tapped, wherein it was revealed that she made a call to the US Ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Pyatt, regarding CIA's interference in Ukrainian coup, as well as making up the next Ukrainian government. This is a big evidence that United States government has interfered as well as sponsored the 2014 Ukraine civil unrest. Plus, at that time, Joe Biden was the vice president and today he is the president. So he is continuing where he left. Anyhow, this civil unrest went on till February 2014. Viktor Yanukovych and some of his government officials fled to Russia in early March 2014. As you know, after him, Petro Poroshenko became the president of Ukraine on 25th May 2014. By the way, US helped him to get in power. So from March till May, if you see, during these 2-3 months, Ukraine practically had no government. It was a stateless nation for a short period of time. And as I said, Viktor Yanukovych fled to Russia in early March 2014. That is when Russia strategically annexed and took over the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine, when it was a stateless nation for a short period of time. Russia even installed their own pro-Russian Sergei Aksyon government in Crimea. Russia even conducted the Crimean referendum. Majority of the people in Crimea and eastern part of Ukraine are anyhow Russian speaking. So they voted in favor of the Russian Federation and 16th March 2014 was declared as Crimea's independence. Naturally, if you look at it from Ukraine's point of view, they condemn it and they even consider it to be a violation of international law. United Nation has similar view and it is in favor of Ukraine. But then the Russian government defends it and it says that there was a proper referendum where the people of Crimea has voted in favor of Russia. It is called the principle of self-determination of peoples. Self-determination is also called the right of people. Anyhow, the point is that Russia took over Crimean Peninsula in March 2014. So 2014 is an important year in the history of Ukraine for three reasons. First, the Euromaidan movement came to an end. Second, the new president was elected. And third, Ukraine lost Crimea. Now, as soon as Russia took control of Crimea, Vladimir Putin publicly spoke about protecting the rights of Russian citizens and Russian speakers in Crimea and southeastern Ukraine. Immediately after his statement, the Russian ethnic group in the eastern and southeastern regions of Ukraine felt connected. There was already a crisis going on in Ukraine and in the middle of that these Russian people in Ukraine strongly connected to the Russian president statement they felt that somebody is talking about them and that created an ethnic division in the eastern regions of Ukraine and these regions are Donetsk and Luhansk it is also called the Donbas region in this region the Russian speaking Ukrainians are in minority they often had clashes with the Ukrainian military you can say that there was a mini war going on in the Donbas region and these clashes are violent brutal and armed since this region is bordered with russia so obviously the russian government supported these minority armed forces in their fight against ukrainian military although russia publicly denies its involvement but then we have to agree that without the support of a bigger nation minority groups cannot form their own armed forces and go against their own country's military ukraine lost crimea in march 2014 and it had a fear of losing the donbas region as well So from March to September 2014 there was a mini war going on in the Donbas region. That's when on 5th September 2014 France, Germany, Russia and Ukraine they came up with a ceasefire agreement through the Minsk agreement. So basically the aim of this agreement was to end the war in the Donbas region of Ukraine. Minsk is the capital and the largest city of Belarus. On 5th September 2014 the head of all these four countries France and Germany represented OSCE Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe. They all signed the agreement, but then the agreement failed and there were ceasefire violations in Donbas region. Now both the sides started fighting brutally. Again a fresh agreement was set up. It was called Minsk 2, which was signed on 12th February 2015. Even this failed. 
So overall, there were two Minsk agreement, one in September 2014 and the other one in February 2015. Both of them failed. And I'll tell you why they failed. If you look at it from Ukraine's perspective, they want three things. Ceasefire, withdrawal of heavy weaponry and full Ukrainian government control throughout the Donbas conflict zone. Now, if you see from Russia's perspective, Russia wanted autonomy of Donbas. Russia wants this region to govern itself and control its own affairs. Because Russia is confident that here the people are Russian speaking and they are pro-Russians. Ukraine automatically has a problem with this. And that is why Ukraine is against the autonomy of Donbas. So this is why the Minsk agreement failed twice. However, the agreement was signed by all the Normandy 4. The implementation of the agreement failed. Now it is very important for you to take a look at what all was written in the Minsk 2 agreement. It consisted of 13 points which was agreed upon. Here are the 13 points. I want you to pause the video and have a look at it. If you look at points 4, 11 and 12, Ukraine was not in favor of it. Now, if you look at the 10th point, then Russia was supposed to withdraw all its military equipment and mercenaries. And if you look at the third point, Germany and France, who represent OSCE, they had to do constant monitoring and verification. And if you see, it was actually their duty to make sure that the Minsk II is followed and implemented in full honor. Because if you look at all the four countries who participated and signed the Minsk agreement, Today, these three of them are fighting against Russia. But in 2015, Germany and France were supposed to play a neutral role. They were supposed to make Ukraine and Russia follow the rules. But they didn't do that. And why they didn't do it? That is what Angela Merkel revealed during her interview on 7 December. She said, the 2014 Minsk agreement was an attempt to give time to Ukraine. It also used this time to become stronger as can be seen today. The Ukraine of 2014 and 15 is not the modern Ukraine. Basically, all the three partners of Minsk agreement lied and betrayed Russia. Even Russian president said, one day Russia has to reach an agreement with Ukraine, but Germany and France betrayed Russia, and they are now helping Ukraine with weapons. That means even Russia is aware of it. It is a shame that Western political leaders engage in negotiations that they do not intend to honor or enforce. If you read Petro Poroshenko's statement, even he said the same thing what Angela Merkel said. Now, this is a realization that even Vladimir Putin has come to. Last month, when he met with Russian wives and mothers of Russian troops fighting in Ukraine, including a few widows of fallen soldiers, Putin acknowledged that it was a mistake to agree to the Minsk Accords. And he even said the Donbas problem should have been resolved by force of arms at that time only. In other words, he is saying Russia should have taken the Donbas region in 2014 itself, through force, right after Crimea. Russia waited 8 years to recognize Donbas region's independence, and then launched a full-scale attack in February this year. But then Putin was under the impression that the Minsk Accords, guaranteed by Germany and France, and endorsed unanimously by United Nations Security Council, including by the United States, would resolve the crisis, and they would give Donbas autonomy, while remaining part of Ukraine. Germany and France, they were supposed to ensure that the Minsk Accords would be implemented. From 2015 to 2022, the collective West always knew that war is the only solution. They never wanted peace. They just played along in the name of Minsk Agreement. So if you see, it is a diplomatic win for the West. That is the reason even India is aware of United States' true color. And it maintains sufficient distance from time to time. If you remember the Munich Agreement of 1938, it is a great lesson in international relations. If you are a student of international relations, then you must learn the lessons from Munich Agreement of 1938. I'll tell you in brief. Adolf Hitler had threatened to unleash a European war unless the Sudetenland, which is a border area of Czechoslovakia, it contained ethnic German majority. Hitler wanted this region to be part of Germany. So to avoid the war, France, United Kingdom, Italy signed an agreement called the Munich Agreement with the Nazi Germany where they permitted Adolf Hitler to incorporate Sudetenland. Likewise, in today's time, France and Germany appeased Russia with the Minsk Agreement and gave false hopes of peaceful settlement. But in reality, they were buying time for Ukraine to build its military. There was never a diplomatic solution. The collective West, which includes United States, NATO, European Union and the G7, they fooled Russia into believing that there was a diplomatic solution to Donbas conflict. Instead, they were preparing Ukraine for a full-fledged war against Russia. 
So either way this war was meant to happen. There was no diplomatic solution. That is why I said this in my previous videos, the West never came to the table for any kind of negotiation with Russia. Since Russia attacked first, so no one would criticize the West. This is what Angela Merkel wanted to convey, the Cold War never ended. She was the German Chancellor when Ukraine's state coup happened in 2014 and the Minsk Accords were signed. Therefore her contribution to this duplicious game played by Germany, France, Ukraine and US has led to this war. And she very well knows it. But either way, it is not going to end well for Germany as well as France. The economies have been badly hit. Ukraine, as I said, has been completely destroyed. It has become the next Afghanistan of Europe. It is the Western political leaders who are guilty of the murder of Ukraine. As it is since 2015, the Ukrainian government has been launching vicious military attack against Russian-speaking Ukrainian civilians in the Donbas region. Thousands of Russian-speaking civilians have been killed. Russia should have taken back the territory in 2014 itself, along with Crimea. But then Russia fell into the trap of the Western country's Minsk agreement. I will end this video with a famous quote by Henry Kissinger. To be an enemy of America can be dangerous, but to be a friend is fatal. It's not so much Russia that started this war. It's United States that started the war. Ukraine is nothing but a pawn supported by the United States and other European governments. And it is a pity that the Ukrainian government serves the interest of the United States and not the Ukrainian people. I hope you find this video informative. Thank you for watching it.